Hi students and welcome to another video in the HSC chemistry series from the acidic environment topic. Uh, in this one we're just going to look at the oxides of sulfur and the oxides of nitrogen in just a little bit more detail and uh, pull out a few important equations. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify how some of the oxides of nitrogen are produced. Uh, and we said that there's um, a couple of important things that are happening here. Probably the most important natural source uh, of energy which facilitates this reaction is lightning. But it also occurs very common, uh, very commonly in motor vehicles and power stations. And this is because nitrogen and oxygen are the two dominant atmospheric gases. When they combine, they can form a number of different types of compounds. One of the compounds they can form is nitrous oxide, which is shown here, um, NO. Um, this is one of the oxides of nitrogen that I mentioned in a previous uh, video. Now, one of the things that can happen with this particular product uh, or compound is that in the lower atmosphere, and we'll have a look at the different levels of atmosphere in one of the future topics, um, the sunlight actually oxidizes this nitrous oxide and produces nitrogen dioxide. And you may remember a couple of videos ago we were having a look at some of the um, health impacts of nitrogen dioxide. This is a bit of a nasty, uh, a nasty one, this, this one. So these are a couple of ways in which you can show the formation of different oxides of nitrogen in the atmosphere and also identify both natural sources and also um, human sources or, or non-natural sources, if you like. Likewise, we can also look at some of the equations that are associated with the formation of oxides of sulfur. Um, this is one of the ones I looked at in a previous um, video, and it's basically the um, consequence of solid sulfur. Um, naturally, this would be a source like uh, volcanic activity, um, but may also occur uh, in things like smelting or the burning of um, fossil fuels, fossil fuel combustion. Okay, in both of these, sulfur is actually one of the elements that can be present in either locked up as a compound within the ore that's being smelt or um, within the coal itself. And its release under high temperatures um, can lead to the oxidation of the sulfur and the production of sulfur dioxide. Of course, once we produce sulfur dioxide, then there's a possibility that can um, further oxidize uh, to become sulfur trioxide. And this is a problem one because, as I mentioned before, when this dissolves in water, uh, it produces a um, solution of sulfuric acid, uh, which is a very strong acid and one that we're going to look at, strength we're going to look at a little bit later on. Now, we will have a separate video that looks at acid rain, but a lot of that will be more about some of the consequences of acid rain. So it's worth having just a quick review of some of these important um, uh, reactions. And we've used this to d demonstrate the acidic nature of non-metallic oxides. So here we've got the formation of nitrous acid and also nitric acid which is a consequence of the oxides of nitrogen being present in the atmosphere and dissolving in um, water. Likewise, we have the production of sulfurous acid and also sulfuric acid as a consequence of oxides of uh, sulfur being um, dissolved into water. So these are all potential sources of um, acids in what we call acid rain. And we will look at the fact that carbon dioxide itself forms a weak acid and therefore um, drives the pH of rainwater down a little bit, but certainly not as low as any of these others. Um, one quick thing perhaps to mention too is uh, you may have heard of catalytic converters which have been um, added to car exhausts basically to try and um, neutralize some of the problem gases that may result from either incomplete combustion in the case of carbon monoxide uh, and also um, nitrous oxide as a consequence of the um, high pressure, high temperature 
um, conversion of nitrogen and oxygen into nitrous oxide. What you can see that the catalytic converter does is it takes these two um, nasty uh, products of the combustion reaction uh, or process and what it does is converts them back to atmospheric nitrogen. So this is the form that is dominant in our atmosphere and also carbon dioxide. Now while carbon dioxide is still a greenhouse gas, so therefore it's a little bit of a problem it's certainly not as, a, as big a problem in terms of pollutants and, and irritants as the carbon monoxide. So this is another little area, another important little equation that you might like to include when you're discussing some of the oxides of nitrogen and their impact uh, in the atmosphere. Thanks for watching.